This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Thursday, July 13. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Former Prime Minister Owen Arthur is calling for cooler heads to prevail in the trade union movement. Arthur was one of two independent MPs to whom the unions attempted to present letters following Tuesday's march to Parliament. But the St. Peter MP is warning that Barbados' economic problems will not be solved by political theatre or gimmickry. He also responded to the failed attempt by the trade union leaders to get an audience with Prime Minister Frundell Stewart. Arthur told Barbados today he is not defending Stewart or the failed economic policies of the DLP administration, but he says the office of the Prime Minister is being disrespected in a manner that would not be tolerated by him or his predecessors, Errol Barrow or Tom Adams. I know how forceful they were, and I cannot imagine any delegation turning up on the Parliament on a Tuesday and seeking to have that kind of audience on that kind of substance subject with, uh, let's say, a Errol Barrow or a Tom Adams and expect to be treated with even decorum. I mean, I guess that if they were to do that to those who are forced with prime ministers, I believe that when you look up at Calais, the figures that you see red and water towards St. Vincent with the, the persons who would have incurred all the, 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 the awful ire of those prime ministers by seeking to have them in that kind of posture. And, and, and the, the reality is that even if you don't like the holder of the office, you have to respect the dignity of the office, especially those who aspire to hold the office. Arthur also cautions the unions that the local economy is on the brink of collapse and the country still needs to come to terms with the enormity of the situation. In response to the union's 48-hour ultimatum, he says there are a number of serious questions that the leaders need to answer. If the minister buckles and cuts his um, the taxes, then he has to find an alternative way of paying the bills. Um, one of those, I've said it may be the only alternative way that I can think of is the IMF, IDB, CDB. Are you prepared to come to quote unquote there with me? Because then otherwise I, I can't join you. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ferndale Stewart is pledging his continued commitment to working with stakeholders, including trade unions, for the well-being of citizens. The pledge comes as Stewart denied allegations that he refused to meet with trade union leaders on Tuesday as they tried to present him with a letter outlining their concerns about the National Social Responsibility Levy. On Tuesday, President of the National Union of Public Workers, Akani McDowell, reported that Stewart refused to meet with him and three other trade union leaders, and he advised them through a police officer that he was prepared to meet only one. McDowell added that having decided to move on, the four met with opposition leader Mia Motley and were on their way out when the officer returned to advise that the Prime Minister was prepared to meet them all. In a statement issued through the Government Information Service, Stewart sought to give further background into the turn of events. On Monday afternoon, when the officer from the special branch was making me aware of this matter, in readily agreeing to receive the letter, I indicated that I saw nothing wrong with making myself available to the person who was going to hand the letter over. On Tuesday, around 12.20 p.m., I got up and left the chamber. While Minister of Finance Christopher Sinclair was speaking, a practice I don't ordinarily follow. I do not leave the chamber when my ministers are speaking. But I considered this occasion significant enough to justify my varying that practice. In other news this morning, the Ministry of Transport and Works has begun working to reset traffic lights in St. Michael and Christ Church that have been out of order in recent days. And as we hear in this report from Barbados Today's Kobe Brooms, motorists have been voicing their concern over the flashing signals in those areas. A Barbados Today team visited some of the affected traffic lights across the parish of St. Michael, including those at Bank Hall, Hines Hill, Bay Street and Hinesbury. The situation is particularly dire in Eagle Hall as motorists going in various directions try to maneuver around each other, resulting in a number of close calls. This situation has caught the attention of President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Charmin Roland Boeing. She told Barbados today that the situation is an accident waiting to happen because some motorists are unaware of how to proceed at flashing lights 
She is therefore calling for more public education. Persons need to be educated on correct use of those, um, what they do, correct meaning and how to use them correctly. So uh, if they're going to be like that, you know, be purposely placed in the slashing mode, a public education, overall public education and public service announcement should be um, put in place, you know, so that all persons would not um, directly how to use these legs. When contacted by Barbados Today, the Ministry of Transport and Works, who is responsible for maintenance of traffic lights, issued a statement saying that it was aware of the problem, but its electronic unit was initially unable to fix it because the necessary equipment was not available. But the Ministry has since received the equipment necessary and has resumed its works on the traffic signals. Kobe Brooms reporting for Barbados Today. The Barbados Drug Information Network is reporting some challenges in gathering data to reflect patterns and treatment of drug abuse in Barbados. Research and Information Officer at Bardin, Jonathan Yearwood, outlined some of those issues when he presented the organization's 2015 report this week. We have a lack of standardization in data collection. For instance, we ask persons, one year you may collect data between 18 and 25 years, for instance. The next year, we see between 18 and 27, 18 and 30. So, lack of consistency may affect how we analyze trends. And this is something that we need to work on as a, as a group. Use of appropriate databases for data collection. Again, we see, see that as a problem. Some people may be using Excel, fine. Some people say that they may use Word, okay. Um, but in, in terms of the accuracy, um, we need to really come to grips with how we not only collect but store our data. It, and again, it has issues for, it has indications, sorry, for our individual organizations. Yearwood says the delays on the part of the agencies gathering information was another dilemma that Bardin has to address. We are not operating under a guided framework of a memorandum of understanding. Yes, we need to eventually move there, but we are operating from our goodwill, for our established historical relationships, with the agencies that participate. Which means that the agencies have no obligation, so to speak, to participate in bargaining. They can drop out and uh, no problem at any time. There's regional and international news after this short break. Good morning, Phyllis and Company may help. Oh, certainly, one moment, please. Ms. Phillips, yeah. there's a lady on the line from the nation newspaper who would like to speak with you. The nation? Will she go on? Well, they're trying to sell us some ads. Look, <laughs> don't make me laugh this morning. Ads in the nation? They're real expensive, and for one year, nobody ain't buying them papers no more. Nobody ain't want to steal news. I hear reading Barbados today online for free. So I tell she thanks for calling, but no thanks. We just advertise in Barbados Today families. Tell she is Barbados Today all the way. Okay, I'll pass on the message. Mom, are you still there? Oh, she, she does. She put it down. The Barbados Today news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. In news from the region, we go to Cuba, where designers have resorted to repurposing trash to cope with a shortage of raw materials. We get more in this Reuters report. They say that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And for lamp designer Olaf Alejo, his business depends on it. 50, 60 percent, as I was saying, is recycled material. With a collector's eye, Alejo scours Havana's trash in search of the raw materials badly needed but so hard to find in Cuba. Alejo, a former engineer, says his efforts are paying off. For the craft work, for my pieces, for my paintings, for my lamps, and for my profession, and well, I decided to take a break from my profession. With the government now allowing private businesses, 
Alejo is part of a new kind of workers' revolution. The number of Cubans self-employed has more than tripled in the past six years to more than half a million at the end of 2016. And like Alejo, many of those self-employed have turned to recycling. Caridad Limonta, whose family firm sells women's apparel, says nothing goes to waste. From the clothes we fix, there is always something left, something left over from a leg. We have to change a neckline, and we keep all of the leftover material. And it's a trend that continues to grow, a creative fix that keeps these Cubans in business. And on the international scene, the British government says it will not publish in full its report on the sources of funding for Islamist extremism in Britain. The announcement prompted opposition charges that the government was trying to protect its ally, Saudi Arabia. The report was commissioned in 2015 by the then Prime Minister David Cameron, and it was handed over to government last year. Ministers have been under pressure to release its findings following three deadly attacks in Britain since March, which have been blamed on militants. Home Secretary Amber Rudd says although some extremist organizations are receiving hundreds of thousands of pounds, she has decided against publishing the review in full. That's the morning news. There's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can find us on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune in to Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good morning.